The views and opinions expressed by participants in the following public affairs program do not necessarily reflect the position or beliefs of WDEF or its staff. This is Point of View, celebrating a world record-breaking 62 years of quality public affairs programs from the studios of WDEF News 12, Chattanooga. Thank you very much for joining us on this special and historic segment of Point of View. Today, it's a judicial view from the bench. Yes, we've all seen our favorite judges on television with real characters and real monies being paid out for decisions that are made. But this is up close and personal because it's Hamilton County. It's where we live, where we encounter people. And just because you wind up before a judge does not necessarily mean that you've done something wrong. You might be there as a witness. And stepping forward is part of what it's all about. But have you ever wondered, what's the judge thinking when they see people? What goes into the decision-making process? Well, that's what we're here to find out today. I'm going to turn the program over. What you're about to see has not been done. Uh, here, the judge is the host, and the judge's guest is a judge. So join us now with Judge Gary Starnes from the Hamilton County Court. Good afternoon. I'm General Sessions Judge Gary Starnes, as the lead-in said. Uh, I'm here to be the host of the first of the kind show that they've had here at the station. It's called View from the Bench. And today you're going to hear from myself and my colleague, Judge Lila Statham, uh, on various issues and topics that we deal with as General Sessions judges. Um, as I said earlier, I'm Judge Gary Starnes. I was elected, first elected to the bench in August 2012, uh, was re-elected in 2014, and have been on the bench for almost five years. Uh, my colleague is Judge Lila Statham, and I'm going to let her introduce herself, and then we'll go into the questions and answers. Hello, I'm Judge Lila Statham. I am also a General Sessions Judge. I have been on the bench since 2012. I was uh, appointed by Governor Haslam in 2012 um, when one of the judges took medical leave. Uh, I was also re-elected in uh, 2014 uh, to an eight-year term. Uh, my background, I was a career prosecutor uh, serving first in Davidson County and then moved back home to Hamilton County uh, in 1998. Thank you, Judge Tatum. Um, before I go into the question and answers that we will uh, discuss today, let me go ahead and tell you a little bit about what we do as General Sessions judges in Hamilton County, Tennessee. In Hamilton County, Tennessee, we have five General Sessions judges. Uh, each of us have the same jurisdiction. We hear criminal and civil cases. On an average year, we hear approximately 45 to almost 50,000 new criminal cases per year in Hamilton County. And in addition to that, we hear about 16,000, 15 to 16,000 civil cases. At any one given time, there are three judges on the criminal bench, and at any given time, there are two on civil bench. And we rotate around from criminal to civil uh, on a daily basis. Um, on our first topic that we would like to discuss today, uh, we're going to talk about bonds and bail, which are one and the same. And a lot of times folks don't understand what bonds are for and why people who are charged with a crime uh, are out on bail, uh, particularly in, in cases involving, involving heinous murders, uh, rapes, uh, all sorts of bad crimes, which are felonies, non-felonies. And we're going to answer some of those questions for you and discuss those issues so that give you a good idea of what the purpose of a bond is, how it's set, the issues that come up when the bonds are violated, uh, what alternatives can be used when you're talking about violations of bonds. So what I'm going to do is ask Judge State and my colleague and my guest today to tell us the purpose of the bonds and discuss those a little bit, and then I'll lead right in behind her. Okay. Thank you, Gary. One of the main purposes of a bond being set is to secure someone's appearance in court. Uh, the bond should not be more than is necessary to secure their appearance in court. However, another condition of bond is that a person 
uh, should not be a danger to the community. So that's some of the factors that we also must con consider in a case is, are they going to be a danger to our community? Um, sometimes that's difficult to tell uh, right off the bat till you hear some of the proof in the case. And oftentimes as a result of hearing the proof in the case, the bonds are often increased when we hear more about a particular defendant. When a bond is originally set, in our county, traditionally, they are set by a magistrate. And a magistrate merely looks at a record, reads the charges, and determines what's the appropriate bond in this case. However, by the time we see them in court, maybe a week later to two weeks later, uh, we have more information that's come to light about a particular defendant. And we're able to better look at what the bond should be to secure the safety of our community at the same time uh, securing the appearance of the defendant back in court. And, and basically what we see every day, we see felonies and misdemeanors. And by definition, a misdemeanor is punishable by no longer than 11 months, 29 days incarceration. And a felony is by definition a year or more incarcerated up to death penalty. Uh, and we hear a lot of those, most of the cases that are criminal in nature come through General Sessions Court on a daily basis, which is why we hear almost 50,000 new criminal cases a year. When you're talking about bonds, uh, she just, Judge Statham just uh, enlightened us on that. There's really two-fold purposes that she discussed, and we're going to elaborate some more on that. Basically, a bond is to, there's two purposes, to ensure that that defendant, criminal defendant, who isn't convicted yet, who's just charged with a crime, uh, appears at trial and um, for the safety of the community. A lot of factors go into that. That is statutory. The legislature sets forth numerous factors. Uh, they tell us what to look at. That includes a person's past criminal history, their educational background, where they're working, and what, most importantly, if they could be a danger to the public at large. And frequently fi we find that happen. That occurs quite a bit when you have someone who's charged in multiple slayings or, or potentially gang members who, who have shot people or whatever. Um, when we are setting, when the magistrate set a bond or we set a bond, um, Judge Statham, what happens from there? We, what, I could explain that, but since you're my guest, I'm going to let you okay. go ahead and talk about that. What do we do from there? We, they come in front of us, they've got a bond or they don't have a bond and we're trying to set it. And what happens when we set it and they violate a condition of the bond? A lot, most of the time when you do have a bond set, whatever that amount is, we can put conditions on there, such as having a, uh, an ignition interlock device, house arrest, uh, uh, GPS monitoring bracelet, alcohol monitoring bracelet. But why don't, can you explain to the public what we normally see and what you do in those situations um, when we have those type of issues raised? Okay. Oftentimes, someone um, will be out on bond and out in the community, and we will see that they've committed a new crime. Either they will walk back in our courtroom on a new case and we recognize them, or the district attorney brings it to our attention. In that circumstance, we can have a motion uh, that's generally filed by the district attorney to increase their bond. At that point in time, we would serve them with that motion and give them an opportunity to prepare unless it's a very dangerous situation. There are some situations where they might have to be taken into custody to protect the community until we could have that hearing. But in general case, we would serve them with that motion, reset it for a hearing to determine what should happen in order to cause them to see that they can't be on bond out in the community committing more crimes. At that point in time, um, they would come back before on the motion and the district attorney would present proof to see if their bond should be increased or if additional conditions should be put in place. Sometimes we could put an individual on house arrest, we could put them on a GPS monitor, we could put them on drug screens, we could require them to go into treatment. There's all sorts of conditions to try to change a person's behavior before we have to uh, incarcerate them. But sometimes people uh, that commit crimes just refuse to stop committing crimes and they may have to be held until a preliminary hearing could occur.
All right, let's shift our focus to another topic today that we want to discuss. One of the biggest issues out there are driver's license. Um, there's a big difference between having your driver's license revoked because you didn't pay a fine in city court or general sessions court or, or somewhere else in another state and they've revoked your driver's license versus someone who's charged with a DUI um, and the state legislature lets them have a license back but with severe restrictions. Uh, so I'm going to ask Judge Statham to talk about the driver's license uh, individually because it's such a big issue and one of the things I want to point out before she, before she comments is in Chattanooga we have we don't have to deal with Knoxville, Nashville or Memphis anymore on the telephone. We have a driver's license reinstatement office here in Hamilton County. It is out on Bonnie Oaks at the Department of Homeland and Security and Safety there and we frequently see people send people out there to try to get their license reinstated so they can go to work and pay their fines and fees and make a living. Uh, Judge Statham, uh, would you explain to the, the public at large here what kind of problems we see with driver's license and how they can get them reinstated and, and the issues that are involved when they don't pay fines or have a DUI or anything of that nature? Okay, what we see on a regular basis is people who may have been 18, 19, 20 years old and they got a speeding ticket or they got some sort of traffic ticket and they just made the determination, I'm not going to court. And unbeknownst to them, because they move about, they don't realize their license are revoked. And they continue this process over and over again. And one day they wake up and they're 30 years old and they haven't ever had a driver's license and they really don't know where to go to start to get a driver's license. One of the things that I would encourage people, make sure you have a current address on file with the Department of Safety. You can go online and change your address. That way the Department of Safety will notify you before your license are revoked. That's the key element to keep from this happening to yourself without knowing. The next thing, if you have tickets that you've not paid and, and you want to try to get a license, come down to the courthouse go to city court, go to general sessions court, go to general, uh, go to criminal court, try all three of those locations and see which particular area is holding your license. Now also the Department of Safety can give you a printout that will show you exactly what areas you need to go to. Start there. If you owe a large amount of money, try to find out what judges have your license suspended, go see those judges and see if you can get on a payment plan in order to try to get your license. Now it will depend on the type of crime you've been convicted of or you failed to appear in whether or not you can actually get on a payment plan, but oftentimes you may be able to get the judges to waive some of your costs. All right, we have, let's go to another quick topic. We have about 45 seconds. Let's talk about alternative sentencing. You can't you can't put everybody in jail at the same time because we don't have a big enough facility or facilities. Uh, tell us what alternative sentencing we have, such as public works or whatever, that we frequently give out on a daily basis uh, instead of incarceration. Okay. Now, we have a public works uh, a part of our county probation, and they uh, will let people go out in our community and pick up trash and the like. And also we have a community corrections, which is house arrest, and we have a county probation as well. All right. Thank you for being here as my uh, guest. I, uh, I very much enjoyed it. Thank and you. And we've really enjoyed it. I'm glad to have, have been the host of the first View from the Bench. Thank you. Na, 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 na. I love you so. I love you. I love you. La 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 We're here. Yay! It's a short drive from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. Join us for Point of View weekends on News 12 Now. We taught him how to hit a baseball. How to hit a receiver, the strike zone, the net. You taught him how to hit the upper corner. You even taught him how to hit the open man. But how much time have you spent teaching him?
what not to hit. Hello, I'm Maurice Lewis, and thank you very much for joining us on this edition of Point of View. What is magic? What is an illusion? Well, magic is when you make something seem like it happened, and an illusion is something quite different. Jaden Maxwell, you are the illusionist for this show, Point of View, mm -hmm. and you've magically reappeared here once again because you have something special you want to share with us. Mm -hmm. The That's difference right. between magic and an illusion. Magic and illusion, often, too often I get asked that question. Magic is, to me, is the emotion that we have. It's that childlike hope, knowing when we still believe and we want it enough. But we want to believe. That's right. Anything is possible. That is magic. So magic can be anything. So we go to sleep at night as kids and as uh, adults, too, when we're dreaming about the new Mercedes. That's, that's, that's right. That may not happen, but... <laughs> <laughs> or or that, that pizza that I want in the morning. Or the girl of our dreams. Or the girl of our dreams, yeah. yeah. Uh, illusion is just what I do. It's, um, it's something that can be anything. Deception, um, the art of distraction, misdirection. Yes. Um, and as an illusionist, I use technique, psychology, acting, um, a little bit of science, and we fuse everything together for a show. So as an illusionist, um, it's, uh, it's neat to create magic. Well, so. this is the season of magic. It is. We're talking about the Christmas That's season. Right. We're all in the mood. We want to share. We want to receive. Mm -hmm. uh, you do some special things for a lot of different people, and we'll talk about that yeah. a little bit later on. What have you brought for us today? Sure. Um, I've got um, some coins in my pocket here, Maurice. Just uh, here, hold out your hand there. Got some coins there. Okay. Some quarters, some dimes. Um, I'll tell you what one's got some marking on it, but we're going to basically going to take one of these quarters here now. There can be any one of them. The idea is to take this coin, and I'm going to put the coin in my elbow here, like this. Okay. And I call this illusion muscle bend. So watch what happens. I've been working out here lately. You can see the coin, right? I can see that. Okay. I've been working out here lately. Watch what happens. Check it out. Watch. <laughs> like so. Look, look. I don't know if you can see that oh, there. Oh, yes, I can. Okay. And now we have a coin that's all been up there. Well, now we have proof that one of us has been working out and the other person <laughs> has not. Guess who? <laughs> All right, so, so we've got that. That's magnificent that you were able to do that. And let me tell you something. This is a real quarter. We're talking real money. This was not something that was rubber. This is the real deal. That's right. Go ahead. Yeah. No, no, I want to pick it back up and put it back in the frame there just for a second. The idea okay. is if we take this quarter, you can actually create magic with the quarter. Look. So the quarter appears to come through the pocket. But the real illusion is, is what you can do and get with a quarter these days. There you go. I just wanted to give that to you. <laughs> Happy holidays for you. So, a little you bit. know, it's the colors of the season. Yeah, it is Why the not? colors of the season. Okay. Well, um, another one that I brought with me today, um, sometimes I get asked to do a card trick. I do a lot of stuff with well, rope Well, everybody tricks. wants to know how to do a card trick, and there's a difference between a card trick and an illusion. And that is right. Okay, and a card, we're and this, with that this is a card illusion. So we have card tricks and card illusions. The idea here is I've got a pack of cards that I've marked on the back of them. Each and every single one of these cards are a uh, link of a rope. So the idea is ah. to combine a card trick and a rope trick together. So you have 52 cards. 52 They're cards. all marked. 52 cards, yep. Ah. You like that? Pretty cool? I thought, you know, Vegas and you have something in common, right? We do. I want to give these cards a quick little mix here. We're going to go um, fancy here. Watch. Check this one out. There we go. There it goes, just like so. Put them everything back together. I'm going to keep going there. Quick little shuffle. Good. That's good. So all the cards, Maurice, here are all different. Okay? But I call this not a card trick, and here is the reason why. I'm going to have you take... Right. A uh, link out. I'm going right there. here. Now, I don't want to see got, it. Take a peek I've at got it. it. Yes. Got it? Wait a minute. Hold on. Yeah, we got I want it. I'm going to see it. Okay. Good. Oh, great. The idea is yes. to take it, put it face down right there. We're going to tie a knot okay. in the rope. And I'm going to show you how we tie a knot in the rope. Watch. It looks just like this. Okay. And believe it or not, now one card has a knot. Or I should say one link of so the So I'm supposed there. to believe it or not? You're going to believe it because as an illusionist, I'm going to create that illusion. There's the knot right there. We can see the knot. Everybody see that? Fabulous. And just make sure that that's really on oh, there. Oh, it's absolutely there. So you, you saw one card just a moment ago. Yeah, I know what it was, too, and I showed it to the audience. You so did? So everybody at home knows what well, it is. Well, here's the idea. Is I show one card, and hopefully that one card that is, it. All right. is, the, is the nine. Yes. But that, we want to take the, it. i gotta, I got to save my rope. So the idea is to take the knot back out of the rope. Fantastic. I love the way you just did that. <laughs> Pretty cool. Yes, it is. Awesome. We'll put these up. I've got a. I got something special with me. Um, sometimes around this time of the year, you'll see 
uh, presents open early, sometimes you get them later, but I thought it would be cool right now to show you a little bit of magic. You and I together, we're going to do an illusion together. Would you like that? I am up for this. If uh, I'm up for yeah, nothing else, absolutely. I am up for this. So, and it's the spirit. It is, the Christmas the spirit. Christmas so here's spirit. what I've got right here. I see here. you've got your Christmas colors yeah, I've here. got my Christmas colors. Got your red. We, yeah, we've got red. We're going to hold this right over here, and we've got okay. this little box here. And I want you to take your hand and just put your hand down inside there. Okay. We're going to show everybody that it's empty there. You can right. see that, right? Okay. So the idea is we're going to open this up, and I want you to take it and just open that up up there and just kind of pops open. Oh, magic. Yeah, just like magic. We're going to show everybody the inside. Hey. Okay, got it. And this goes right inside like so. Okay. I am a master illusionist assistant. <laughs> a master illusionist assistant. We're going to take this one back out. Oh, okay. Like so. And just hold that end over there. We're going to show everybody at home nothing on the inside there. Okay, and this goes back on side and back on the top there. Okay. Okay, just like so. Let's turn it this way. Wonderful. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Like so. You got it. All right. There we go. And we're going to make some something up here. What do you like? What do you, what do you like for me to make up here? I'd like to see a lovely young lady. A y lovely young lady. You know what I get asked a lot? Who's also an author. An author? Okay. Yes. Um, what do you... There's a new well, one in Chattanooga. There's something else I would like to have, too. What's that? I would like for this young lady to come and bring some money to the show. Bring some money yeah. to the show. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. I get asked to make money up here all the time. <laughs> We're so, not PBS, you know. You're right. So first off, what you want to do is stand right here just like this. Okay. And just wave your hands over the top like that. I'm going to do this. Okay. I'm going to really concentrate. I'm concentrating. I'm concentrating. <laughs> concentrating? Absolutely. Yep. A bunch of yes. orange juice. Just concentrate, yes. all yeah, right? I am. We're going to lift this one up again okay. like this. Okay. Yep. We're going to set this one back down. Back Where on, it? Yeah. In the back? Yep, back on top. Oh, Put back on back, top. Yeah, back on top. You're doing okay. good. Okay, here we go. Okay, uh-oh. You got it? Yes. Lift the red one up, and on the count of three, ready? Right. We're going to push it down on the count of three. One, one two, two, three. three. Just like that. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. There's a famous <laughs> author. That's a money. That's a money. No, one, two, you know, three. Check. it's not going to be an illusion when I get to keep the money, right? <laughs> awesome. April, how That's are magic. you? Hi. Nice to have you here with us Thank on the show. Thank you so much for having that me. That was so fabulous to be able to introduce you that way, and that, that allows us to go into a, a different part of the segment. We're going to do this, first of all. You are a first-time author. Yes. And I had the pleasure of going over to Barnes & Noble to see you there signing your books with a big poster with your name on it, you know, and people always say, I'm going to write a book. Um, yeah. I'm going to write a book. Well, and that's an illusion. <laughs> that's an illusion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's something that you're thinking about, but yeah. you never really get around to it. Yes. Right. Tell us how did you wind up writing this book. Take the process. You thought of it. Well, my, my son actually had the flu um, several years ago, a couple years ago, okay. and I wrote a Facebook post, and uh, somebody said, take it down, it's really, really cute, turn it into a book. And I, I mean, I hate writing. So I was like, okay, I wrote a little bit. I read it to my son. He's like, okay, well, can I have uh, this stuffed animal? And I was like, oh, I'll go get you one. Which one do you want? He goes, flu. And, he, and I was like, well, that's just a Facebook post. And he said, um, well, I, I want to watch the movie. And I said, honey, it's just a Facebook post. And so in August, um, I felt the calling to go ahead and finish the book. And but so, then that's when the real work starts. Yes, yes. Um, it didn't take me long to actually finish writing the book, and then I drew all the pictures, which is a miracle because I've never drawn anything original in my life. That's so, magic. <laughs> yeah, that's all magic. of those characters <laughs> yeah, are yeah. Um, original drawings. Yeah. And, um, and so the formatting was the hardest part, but um, I finished it. Flu so. is an actual story. Yes, yes, he's it's a little. It's a children's um, story. Yeah, he's a little bug who loves to dance. He's got a little dancing shoes on. Okay. And uh, but when he does, he makes people sick, and he has a party. And, and um, this is the season where the flu is really making its presence. Oh right. yeah, That's yeah, it is magic. definitely flu <laughs> yeah. season right now. <laughs> exactly. But this is a this is the start of a very long series. I feel that children. There's not a lot of. Um, books on very many children's illnesses and diseases so so what was the process like finding someone to publish did you have to go through a lot of phone oh, calls a lot of letters I self-published ah. yes and and I you know I've had so many people say oh, I'm writing a book or I want to write a book and I'm like just do it do it finish it self-publish there's so many companies out there that you can self-publish with and then once you get going then you can find a company you know to to kind of take you on board but um, anybody can self-publish. Anybody so can publish a book. now that you've done this, mm -hmm. how are you feeling about this? I'm excited. 
I'm really excited. I am, um, I'm really looking forward to writing the next book, which is on leukemia. And then um, I'm doing on cerebral palsy and all. Luke, time. that's the next one, isn't it? Luke. Yeah, Luke. Luke, yeah. Luke Emia, leukemia. Um, and so, and, and what I do is I take the characters and I don't take like Susie gets sick and she goes to the doctor, that thing. Right, I take it as characters open. of what's going on inside your body and right. there's all these little characters kind of fighting and, you know, they, you know, officer and fever managing. has to come and, t you know, stop the situation and stuff. So, so yeah. we're getting ready to change the situation back to you for a minute, but before sure. I do this, this is available where? Um, it's on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. It's, it's on a lot of the online retailers, but uh, Barnes and Noble on Amazon. If you look up "flu" with my last name Sinclair. Okay, absolutely. You can't have this copy back because this is my own autographed copy. Yes, I signed now, that for you. Now this is real. Let's get back to sure. the illusion part. Sure. What else do, can you do for us today? Sure. Yeah, um, I've got a a little bit more sleight of hand here. This is a, a simple pen. Go ahead and check it out. I'm going to sign okay. that book. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to sign the book. <laughs> uh, your name is Abel Sinclair. <laughs> yeah, not you at all. Sign it, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> other than that, it's, Illusion. it's already spoken for. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> the idea here is to take uh, my, uh, my mentor showed me how to make things disappear. So I'd start with small. I call this organic illusion. And the idea is to be able to pick up anything and make something disappear. You know, disappear or happen. The idea is it just jumps right over here, though. It's not, uh -uh. not too far. But if we take the uh, pen, we can actually smack the cap, and the pen goes. It doesn't go too far. It goes right over there. And I call that the kneecap. But if you smack it again, watch. That sounds kind of Italian to me. Yeah, just like that, it completely okay. goes. Actually, that was the pen. I don't know if you see that, the <laughs> pen there. So we'll take the pen back out just that like this. That was a little bit of misdirection. It is. Too. Did you see? Yeah, exactly. See? Now look what happened right over here. Yes. Get that again, but the pen goes. You see the pen. If you shake just like this, right over here is the pen. And that is a little bit of magic. The only illusion that I'm creating is that I've got a book. And uh, I don't have one yet, so maybe I need to <laughs> make one appear. How long did it take you to get to the point where you're able to proficiently do this? Uh, is it a matter of practicing hours every day? It is. It's uh, like any other craft or art or um, something that someone's involved with, um, sports, uh, basketball. I woke up every single day and it became something of, I want it to be second nature. So anything that I pick up has to have some magical something happen to it. Well, you always bring the magic when you come here. You are the illusionist for Point of View well, on April. Thank you. thank you very much for joining thank us. Thank you for having me. Fabulous success on your first book. Listen, I'm Maurice Lewis. On the next Point of View, we'll be talking about sweet and tasty things. Please stay tuned. Closed captioning provided by the following. Funding for this program is brought to you by Barnett and Company specializing in tax-efficient strategies for the preservation and distribution of family wealth, offering continuous investment management with a focus on long-term strategies. Areas of service include investment, estate, education, and retirement planning. Barnett & Company, the power of compound returns over time. More information can be found on the web at barnettandcompany.com.